Father, we thank you for always being there, always being true, truly never failing us. For you're not a man that you should lie. Neither Jesus, the son of man, that he should repent. Have you not said and shall you not do it? Have you not spoken and shall you not make it good? So our confidence is in you. Father, I thank you for giving me the tongue of the learned that I may know how to speak a word in season to them that are weary. That my speech and my teaching and preaching is not with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but with demonstration and manifestation of the spirit and a power. Therefore, Lord, I commit to give you alone all the praise and the glory and the honor for what will take place this day. In the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. If you would open your Bible to St. John chapter 8, and God has a word for me to share with you to encourage you. And I was up most of the night um, just thinking about ministering to you today and what to say, although it was already prepared, but thinking about it more deeply. What I want to share with you about is God's word will profit your life. Amen. And because part of my role in life is help people understand the why and the how of what God has for us. Amen. Or else there's a huge disconnect. And that's sometimes the reason why people aren't more engaged and more just, just, just receiving more of what God has because there's a disconnect on the why and the benefits, the values. What is it in it for me? And so I'm gonna talk a bit about that, that your life ought to be show for benefit or the Bible's word is profit, say profit. profit. That's not Wall Street word, that's a God word. Amen. It's in the Bible, Old and New Testament, multiple times. And in particular that our life ought to show forth profit and our profiting ought to appear to all. Say to all. To all. Everybody. Say everybody. Everybody. Like in the South, everybody. Everybody. Mm -hmm. everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody. In other words, has it helped you and benefit you to serve Jesus? And how does that, what does that look like? And we we'll to talk about how that happens. And I thought about even in the last song of worship, I was fortunate to be a part of a church like this that taught the scriptures. We're all young people. The church is full of college students, mostly. Pepperdine, UCLA, and college-age people. Hungry for God. Bringing Bibles and notes and it was, it was something I'd never been exposed to. I went to church. I grew up in church, but we didn't do that. And we learn about the word of God and the value of it and, and who we were in Christ. But the word was huge. So I want to talk a bit about that today because I want to encourage you to, I want you to benefit of serving Christ and then share those loving benefits and what God has done in your life with others. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads men to repent. Amen. You know, we can get on people's case, you need to change, do all that, but it's the goodness that leads them to repent. Yeah. Let them see how good God is, I'm going to be all in now. Yeah. You don't have to force me or push me, I'm all in when I say God is good to everybody yeah. who would serve him. But it's the how to do that, how to show forth. And I realize, you know, there's things that happen and so forth, but I tell you, that's part of the benefits, putting on whole, the whole armor of God. Amen. The Bible refers to the, the Bible, the scriptures as the sword of the spirit. It's a weapon, y'all. Right. This is not just literature. It's weapon. Say weapon. weapon. It's designed to, to get things done. And when you have opposition, to deal with the opposition called demons, and they're real. Yeah. Right. But also to pave the way and a pathway for God's plan in your life. 
to show up in your life. Otherwise, we're just being religious, y'all, and I'm not about that. So I care about you taking the time to share these kind of teachings with you uh, because I want you to, I'm not saying you're not, you're not showing any profit, but continue on. Say continue on. continue on. And those that are new, just tap in. The water's warm. Jump on in. The water's warm. But here in John 8, verse 31, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Notice continue. He didn't say get started. Just continue. Now, the good news is he didn't say how long. You just continue. Because in reality, because people are different, the circumstances are different when they come to God and begin to serve God, that they may continue longer to get more results in certain areas of their life. And that's because we're going to show in a moment, you've got to grow in the knowledge of God and walk in the truth. And when you begin to walk in the truth of it, you get the freedom. He's going to talk about it in a moment. If you continue, say continue. continue. But if you're starting and stopping, you know, or, or haphazard about it, you're not going to get the promise he's giving you right now. Amen. He says, if you continue in my word, you should know, you should be my disciples indeed. I mean, the disciple that's doing indeed is not just disciple in theory, in concept. Indeed, say indeed. indeed. That means you're doing something. And you shall know the truth. Say, know the truth. Know the truth. A lot of folk want to know the truth these days. And the truth shall somehow bring you along the way one day you might stumble on freedom. Make no, make you free. Say, make you free. Make you free. I like the way, because some people get to mix it up and they call it set you free. But really, it's make you free. In other words, when you walk in the truth, you can't help it. You're free now. Yeah. It just comes forth. Say, it comes forth. The truth makes you free. It's like light. When a light in a dark room, it's light at nighttime in a dark room, turn the light on, you're free to walk around without concern and know where you, and get where you really want to go. You can see now. You do it yourself. You're made free. Yes, sir. That's what truth does. Amen. And you know, I, none of us have arrived to our to full destination where God would have us to be. But I can tell you, when I began to tap into this. It, it was such a revolutionary change in my life. Growing up poor, my mom was on welfare, you know, the, the, the issues like you see now with the demonstrations and the murders and, and, and the police issues. It went on when I was in high school and college. The Vietnam War and all the demonstrations, it was going on. They didn't like the president then, Nixon. Okay. And so it's the same confusion, same evil that's causing things to stir people up and get distracted off God. Amen. And not continue. Say not continue. Not continue. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Free of what? Free of limitations to do what you know what you need to do in your life. But you, you're afraid to do it or you don't see how you're going to do it. And, you know, limitations are really self-imposed. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, self, it's how we think and how we view life and, and maybe look at our background and situation and, and things happen. And so we kind of say, I can't do that. That won't work. Don't have enough, whatever. No, no right people, wrong color, wrong gender. Well, you know what? You're free. Say free. And so you're free to follow your passions that God put in your heart. And when and you know it's a God thing, then you know whatever obstacle you run into, you overcome that too because you're free. Amen. And all that is in the word, continuing in my word, he says, that you know the truth. Like no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That's the truth. Now, if you just look at it in the memory verse, then you don't got it yet. But if you realize it's for me, then it's the truth that no matter what comes against me, to hinder me, it's no, it won't prosper me. It'll show up on your doorstep. It may be shooting at you, but it won't accomplish its goal to stop you That's right. when you got the truth about it. Amen. And it's all that is in the, word. in the Word. So we have to continue. Say continue. Continue. Continue to understand it, grow in it. And you don't get it all at once. It takes time. It takes a year. It takes a lifetime, to be quite honest. Amen. You know, Jesus' terrorists will die. 
growing in the Word of God. Amen. You can't exhaust God. I read the Bible already. I had one guy. I read that already. I read it three times. It's not literature, man. What's, what's, what's up with that? <laughs> you know, he didn't get it. All right. The Word of God, you read it on your first chapter of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's a person. It's not ink on a page. When you realize the word is a person, it's Jesus. All things are created by him. And the him is right written to you. And he enforces it. Oh, God. And when we, does that understanding that come, comes about over time, you realize this is more than just a book. It's not just God speaking to me. It is God himself working in me when it gets into my heart. Yes. And that understanding only comes about as you continue. Say continue. Continue. So the freedom operates in every area of your life. That, that's why it takes time. That's why it's important to continue. It'd be nice if you just kind of receive Christ and read the Bible one time and you read, a, you know, Genesis, Revelation, I got it, close the book, and you're free in every area of your life. But we have to grow into it. Right. And then we have things that come against us, distract us. And so you got to be fresh. Amen. You know, I have a degree in mathematics, and I've, I had two years of calculus. I'll be hard-pressed to solve a calculus problem right now, Okay. <laughs> I got to go back and I got some books in my calculus books in my office. I got to go book up and, you know, and I might get a little calls about it. <laughs> because I have not continued. Okay. You'll expect that. Well, I'll give you a little slack, Pastor. I understand. You haven't been doing it in a long time. Okay. But if I continue, I can do it right now. So if we don't know how to tap in and, 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 and believe and, and embrace and have, and have our understanding sharpened about what God's word says to us and who we are, and it promises, then we're not sharpening it, even though it's forth, because it requires us to implement it in our lives. Amen. It requires us to implement it. This is why Solomon said, and he starts back way back then. He said, wisdom is the principal thing, making wise decisions. But out of all you're getting, get understanding. So you should know the truth. That's an understanding. I finally get that now. It's not just, I check it off, I, I know that. No, no. It's, it's an understanding of why you should forgive people, why you should be loving, why you should allow people to get into your life, why you should be willing to work with people and then work with you because you find out scripture says every joint, every one of us supplies something, which means you have something I need and I have something you need. And together we can meet one another's needs and others' needs. But I understand, without that, we let life, you know, and I, I see some, sometimes on Facebook, you know, people say, you know, they t it's just interesting. People, they, they're talking about, you know, you, you just can't trust people. You know, what, why are you talking about that? You know, you, know, you got to let people go, and, you know, you're always talking that way. And they're, they're backing themselves up in a corner by themselves. And they're talking, acting like it's okay. It's not okay. And you realize that one day it's not okay when you buy yourself. And nobody come by to visit you or call you no more. But, we, but see, they're crying out. I said they're crying out for help. But they're justified by making it cute. But they don't have the revelation that they're Christians that they need to trust God and still forgive and reach out and restore relationships. That's what the ministry of reconciliation is about, to reconcile people back to God. But you can reconcile friends back in yeah, yeah. Reconcile relationships. It's, 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 it's deception to think that you don't need people or certain people. It's the, it's the hurt in the heart. That's why we have to take time to worship. Let our heart get healed. Because the father wounds, as Joshua was sharing the other day, it, it impacts husband and wife relationships. Boss and, some, you know, what relationships and, you know, all that, it is all human relationships because it's, 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 it's people, but you have to learn to grow in these areas. It's in the Word. Say in the Word. In the word. When it says you'll be made free, he's talking about those areas too. Yes. 
And some folks do good with making money and all that, but they're not good with the honey. Amen. Okay, I'm going to side over here. <laughs> you know, he makes good making money and, uh, you know, and, and doing well, but how is he doing with his honey? So he, so, so he made some progress, and, you know, sowing and reaping, investing great, you know, managing, budgeting and great, counting the cost. That's all Bible. But what about, baby, I love you. I need you. Please forgive me for messing up. <laughs> and, not, and not too proud to be. <laughs> Is that a song I forgot? <laughs> Stop, we're in church. Stop. <laughs> Ain't you proud to beg? <laughs> Sometimes you got to beg, brother, okay? <laughs> I won't do it no more. I'm sorry. But sometimes people, they, they won't let themselves. They're not free to even do that. And knowing deep down inside they want to be back together. But don't, they, they can't find a way to do it. They don't know the truth yet. And some of them are Christians. Go to church. Some of them are pastors. Bishops can't get along with folk. Can't get along with themselves. Now, no, just so you know, I'm not saying I've arrived and I'm so perfect. My wife will tell you I'm not perfect. Hey, Amen. She'll tell you. Amen. 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 But, but see, now this is powerful. When you understand the truth, sometimes you fall off the wagon and get back on the wagon. But see, we have enough commitment to God and one another. We, baby, we're going to work this out. And we're going to love working it out. Okay, so, so it allows us to have a little tit for tat and get over it through love and forgiveness, knowing there's a higher, better prize out there. Amen. So, I, I, so, you know, it's, it's a bump in the road. I'm not going to sit there and look at the bump. Amen. I'm trying to make it practical and a little humorous for you because if we don't learn how to walk in life with the word of God, we just have a church and we don't get into our heart and our mind, we don't change. And we don't show enough profit, benefit in our lives. Amen. And our kids don't want to go to church with us. They don't want to believe in our Jesus. Why? It ain't working for you. No, I mean, not you, those maybe watching today. <laughs> I'm sorry, I hate to be picking on you all online because there's a whole bunch of y'all out there. We love you. So our freedom comes from continuing to grow in the knowledge of the truth. Say continuing to grow. That's another challenge. You know, we live in a world where folks don't want to commit to nothing long term. I, you know, you know get, it is, it's kind of short term. I'm tired of that, you know. Continue. Say continue. continue. He don't say you continue for three, four, five years and you can stop. No, he just continue. How long? Just keep going. Well, I got it down pat. Now you ought to be teachers by now. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it down for me. Great. Now teach somebody else. Amen. Since you got it so, so good together, teach somebody else. Continue. Say continue. 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 Look at Hosea chapter 4, please. Verse 6. One of the earlier verses when I became a Christian in 1973. That's a long time ago. I feel like it was yesterday. I, my life and my wife's life is, is so wonderful. And like so many in this church, that's so why I get, get to know some of these folk here. They're tapping into the Zoe God kind of life. Amen. And I tell you that when I learned that, that there was freedom in the knowing God and his word and applying it to my life, it, it manifests. Before I became a pastor or a bishop, if you look at me, you know, oh, you, ought to, you ought to be happy, all this stuff. No, 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 before I even got near here. How God was moving in my life and blessing my wife and family and children. And he wants that in your life. Because the Bible says the goodness of God leads me to repent. Not the wrath of God. There's the wrath. You don't want to be there. But the goodness. But Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Wow. Read it out loud with me, please. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Say it again. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. One more time. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Wow. He said, my people. This is God speaking. My people. 
Now, it's important when you look at the scripture, you got to think about it. I mean, you would, the human thing, thought may say, well, God, can't you just stop it? You God, you know, why are you letting your people suffer? Be destroyed. It ain't up to him. That's the key. That's why sometimes young people get mad at God because, you know, mom and dad got divorced. And then, you know, now, oh, mom, God prayed. And, well, it's not up to him. You know, they, they, they're two people. They got to make a decision. God won't make them be together. <clears throat> Your prayers help, but, you know, they got, they got a will, free will. If you don't understand that, you're mad at God. God didn't intervene and make them, make them stay together because you want them to be together. I get it. But it's more complicated than that. God honors free will. He says, my people are destroyed. And God's not destroying them. The destroyer does it. Who's that? The devil. Jesus said in John 10, 10, we'll get our name from. He says, the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come, Jesus, that you may have life. That word life is zoe. Amen. It's the God kind of life. The God quality yes. of life. Amen. But the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. Well, how, how, how is that possible when there's God's people? They don't know some things. Amen. They lack something. Amen. It says here, my people are destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge. knowledge. And it's the knowledge of the truth he's talking about. I, I oftentimes encourage you, read, read about, and there's some books about by him, George Washington Carver. Just to catch his spirit of how he was such an inventor, but he was a discoverer, seeking knowledge in the natural things of earth, like the flowers and the plants. Because even how we take care of our body is important. You know, a lot of things you need to know are not in scripture, but it's, it's by seeking God in, 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 the, in the earth. I'm not saying worship trees and all that. I'm saying, God, what, what, is, what is this plant about? My body, my muscles, how do I keep it healthy as I get older? How do I keep it strong? And some of that wisdom's already been downloaded to people in the earth. You gotta read and study it and pick up. You continue in the knowledge of God. Yes, knowledge of God is the word, but it's all the knowledge that God has. He created the whole earth, my friend. He got knowledge about all kinds of stuff. Amen. But if we're not people seeking knowledge, we just go to church. Then mm. mm. what you need and, and what may be destroying us is a lack of knowledge of certain science, medical benefits, and you know, just understanding food and some of the food we're eating. You know, we were not designed to eat grease. Amen. I'm going to it. <laughs> just saying. We were not designed to eat grease. And now it tastes good. I had a little bit in Dallas the other day. <laughs> yeah, a little slap. No, I'm sorry. It was good. But you can't, you can't overindulge in that. I grew up without, I mean, I wasn't a water drinker. I was red soda water and soda pop and, and um, you know, juice. What my juice? Mostly white bread, soda water, and sugar water, and Kool-Aid. Yeah, Kool-Aid. <laughs> you got a pound of sugar in there. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not knowing that diabetes showing up in our families, and all, you know, we're doing it to ourselves. Lack of what? Knowledge. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> because you have what? Rejected knowledge. Now, nobody, well, probably some people, but most folks won't overtly decide, I don't want no knowledge. But we reject, we reject knowledge when we don't want to read. We reject knowledge, we don't want to grow in knowledge. By definition, you said no, because we have a free will. You see, I've learned in the college it was about decision making. And, and sometimes, well, I won't make a, disorder, a choice. I won't, I won't do that. I won't do that. Well, you made a choice. No, I didn't. I, said, I didn't do it. You, you decided not to do it. That's, a, that's still a choice. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you decide not to be proactive, you decide to let somebody else make a choice for you. Amen. Amen. You still made a choice. You just chose not to. So they rejected knowledge. I also will reject you from being priest for me because you have forgotten, say forgotten, forgotten. the law of your God. 
That's you. And to go through our scripture, New Testament, God, when God came out of Egypt, he said, don't forget. Don't forget who I am. Don't forget what I've done for you. I mean, he was a, I mean, the Jews, over two million people came out of Egypt with the spoils of Egypt. And then when, when Pharaoh realized what happened, <laughs> he said, no, nah, all my labor force leaving us. We're going to go get these folk, okay? If they, we don't get them, we're going to kill them. And allow God, allow them to walk on dry land. And Pharaoh's army followed them. And the water came and drowned them. The miracles, like miracles have happened in our lives, in our family. God said, don't forget, say don't forget. Don't forget. If you're not careful, in this American eyes uh, society, you know, we, we, we can write a check, we got credit card, we got, we got access, we do all this good stuff. And we're not careful, we forgot about God. Forgot about what got that, that good job. Amen. Forgot about that got us those customers. Amen. Forgot about how God healed you when you were three Amen. and your mama and dad prayed for you or grandmama prayed for you. You forgot about that. Yeah. You thought it was all you. No, 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 no. Because some of the prayers that, that, that went forth, say, even a generation ago, is impacting your life now. Amen. Jesus said, and it, it, well, before he, was, he went to the cross, Father, they, they, they be one. God's honoring that today. Amen. That's going to happen. We're going to be one. Say be one. be one. So God is answering Jesus' prayer from then. He's yeah. answering your grandmama's prayer. Yeah. So a lot of the benefits we live under, somebody prayed for us. Amen. Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father. Hallelujah. When no, my, no man is an island. Amen. So that's why you ought to be grateful for everything. You may not know who, who influenced you, but blessed you, but thank you. Whoever you use, God, thank you. You have forgotten the law of your God. I also will forget your what? Children. That's, this whole verse is a hard word. Now, God's not in the hurting, you know. See, what he's telling you is that because we made us independent and free will people and do what we want, when we as adults and have children don't line up and forget about God, then our children don't learn about God because we forgot about it ourselves. Yeah. Well, I, want, I had to go to church all the time. I'm tired. My kids won't go to the church. You forgot that. Now God going to forget about, forget about them because you forgot about them. Yeah. I know nobody here, but, you know, maybe some people watching. Uh, so your kids don't, don't go to church no more because, yeah, you know, maybe you were kind of a little overly, overbearing about it. Okay, now the grandkids, your grandkids don't. Because they forgot about God. The continuing helps you not to forget. About God. Keeping it fresh. Say keeping it fresh. That's why renewing, like relationships, like your husband and wife, you know, five year in a, you know, renewal of 10, 20, 15, 20 years. I like to keep it on a regular basis. Amen. I ain't, I ain't waiting until next year. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen, amen. Now, you know, you say, you're just showing up. I do it privately, too. Amen. <laughs> I can't tell you what I do privately. Get this. Amen. Y'all stop. That's why we started our marriage retreat. Called, we call it honey drifting. Okay. All right, stop. That's another lesson. So man's problem in life is a knowledge problem. Say a knowledge problem. A lack of knowledge of the truth in God's word. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. A few more verses and we're about to finish up. 2 Timothy 3, verse 14. He's talking to a young man, young minister, one of his spiritual sons. But you must continue. There's that word continue again. You must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. In this case, this is his mother and his grandmother. And, and from a childhood, say from childhood, he said, I don't want to, I, he, you see, God forgets the children because we forget God as our parents and see what happens. He said, but what the remedy is, help them know the word of God as children. <laughs> and that from ch childhood, you have known the holy scriptures. I like the way he said it. You learn, you've known the scriptures, the verses in the scriptures and the meaning of it, which are able to make you wise for salvation through Faith, which is in Christ Jesus. The scriptures can make you wise. 
If we're not, see, if we don't get into the word, we'll pick up the world's way of doing things. Amen. Tit for tat. Yeah, you know what? Nobody dissed me like that in public. Yeah, but the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. But you don't know, no, I don't put up with that. Now you shot and kill. Because you didn't learn to be wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to teach them to learn to be wise. You're not a chump by giving a soft answer. You just human, you know, you don't match with a few bullets in a gun. You, you can't do that right now. That's why a lot of our young people, because they may have a little church in them, but not enough wise wisdom in them. And good people say good people. And, and some of them are God's people. My people are destroyed. Not the unbeliever, my people. It's the lack of knowledge. Say lack of knowledge. Verse 16, all scripture, say all scripture. all scripture, is given by inspiration of God and is what? Profitable. profitable. There's that word profit. It's in the Bible. Amen. And it's profitable. All the scripture, Genesis to Revelation, my friend, all scripture is benefit and value for practical living, for doctrine, for, for reproof, for correction, even correction. See, you know, you read the Bible, oh, 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 I you know, I, I recall I went to a men's retreat years ago, and there's some guys. It was all men, and we had lunch with the pastor and so forth. And one brother, he was kind of new to the church, and, and he, you know, started talking about his girlfriend and all that, and, and, he, and somehow the word fornication came up. By the way, Vanessa had to tell me what fornication was. I said, what's fornication? <laughs> Sex outside of marriage. I can't do that. No, you can't do that. I ain't doing it with you. Uh, you know what? <laughs> and so it came up, and, and the guy says, that's wrong? He said, no, it's wrong, man. Oh, let me help you. See, so you got to understand the why. You see, the Bible says when husband and wife come together, it's the, sex, the, the sexual union is consummating the marriage, and you become one. Not just one and, and, and with one item, one in spirit. That's why divorce is so painful. That's why you had a boyfriend and, you know, no, you ain't with him, but, you know, but somehow you, there's something there still because you became intimate. It's designed to be within a commitment for eternity. That's why there's confusion. I mean, I've talked to folk, you know, and, and his wife crying out some other man's name. He got issues. See, it's, you see, it's bringing together. And then you have some of that stuff is demonic because you mess around with this, 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 this lady that, that been around all these guys and no spirits are on her, and now it's on you. God says, you just, if you love her, treat her right and wait and get married. It's wisdom. You commit sister and he's not, you know, he ain't committed to you. Well, I'm not ready yet, but we can still come. You know what, if you ain't ready, I'm cutting you loose. Give me my best piece of my life. But it's the wisdom. Say wisdom. But the world wisdom is different from God. That's why you got to know the truth. You got to study it. You got to read it. And then teach your children. No, I, I, I was out there. I, I, I did that too. I, I didn't know no better. But when I learned better, I did better. So that to make you feel bad. See, when you know better, you can, you can do better. I ran the street too, but I learned better. And I got saved and learned, got a hold of the word of God and I started doing better. Amen. All scripture, say all scripture, all scripture, is inspired by God and is profitable. Our lives will profit from walking in the knowledge of God's word. Then it says in verse 17, why? What's the value of it? That the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's finishing college. That's starting that business. How to pray the word of God when, when the money's short. How to go back to the promise of God. My God supplies all my needs. See, see, if you don't understand that, you know, that's, you know, that's, you forgot it. You forgot about that because so when you were reviewing it. Okay, God, you called me in this business, I, but, but right now the, the money's short. I got to make payroll next week, and I'm seeking the mighty counselor, looking for your wisdom, and God shows you what to do, and God shows up. But if we just take, keep business separate from God, then, you know, you don't understand. God's in every path. He wants to be in every part of your life. And the word has something to speak about every area of your life. 
That's how good as you continue. You find out God's concerned about that. You got something to say about that. Oh, 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 oh. God, you good, you good. You co- got me covered. Not just an A and B song selection. It's for your life. Say for my life. One final passage. Hebrews 4. For just verse 2. Just one verse. Verse 2. Hebrews 4. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as unto them. But the word which was what they heard did not profit them. There's a word profit again. Say it did not profit them. Profit. Say it again. Profit. Say it loud. Did not them. Wait a minute. We, we went to the same Bible study, went to the same, you know, church, and we heard the same sermon, and somehow it didn't profit them. They heard it too. Why? I'm glad you asked the, asked the question. Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it, meaning they didn't act upon it. Now that's not for me. Or they just discounted it. They didn't really apply it and then think about it. Because unless you let it get into your heart, then you won't do it because you forgot about it already. It's not that you did it on purpose. You have to give yourself to this word wholly. Completely, I mean. This is why Jesus says, Seek first the kingdom. Let me, read, let me finish with this. I'll, this is what kept waking me up in the morning, this morning, like 2 o'clock. It was, it's, I'm, I'm, I hardly got no sleep this morning, but I'm, I'm fresh. But it's just, God, God wants to be the adder to you. The best way to live, God just add to you. Yeah. Now, you work and all that, but God just adds. He always adds extra stuff and then nice surprises. Amen. So you put God first. All those things you need, just put him first. You follow him and, yeah, do your job in your family, but he'll add more to you. Say add to you. Add he's an add God. Yeah. And he's a multiplying God, too. Yeah. See, if you got to work for everything you get in life, you're not living. You're not designed to pay for everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're not designed to work for everything you get. God just want to add to you. And it's about, so that's why putting in first, he'll add. And it's the stuff you need. Some stuff you don't know you need. Until it shows up, oh, I needed that, God, thank you. He added. But if we don't continue, we're not in competition with one another. You know, you know more than I know. No, not about that. Just wherever you are, just continue. So as we're speaking now and been talking, some of you, it's been ministering to your heart. If not all of you at some level. So now it's what we're gonna do about it. The next steps. That's why school has homework and assignments to get you to go beyond the classroom. The next step is decision. The Bible says, and I said before your life and death, blessing and cursing. Then God gets the answer to the test. Choose life. Choose life for both you and your seed. See, it's about those kids. You and your seed shall live. But I got to make a choice so my kids can live. Choose life. Say, choose life. Choose life. So while every head is bowed and every eye closed, the believers are praying softly. No one leaving except those maybe ushers. But if you got this, you can't wait for another few minutes, you'll be dismissed. God is, is speaking. And those watching online, God is speaking, speaking to your heart. He's spoken to your heart. He wants you to make a decision to take a certain course of action for your life. And the decision is this. For some of you, it is to be a part of God's family and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you're like me, I went to church. I got baptized in the Baptist church, but I wasn't saved. I'm not blaming the Baptist church I went to. I just somehow missed it. I didn't know God. But I went, I went to the routine. I, look, I looked the part. And when I realized I needed to accept Christ for my life because he's a personal savior, God does not have any grandchildren, only children. And so I, I can't go on my mom and dad's cocktail. Right. I got to receive him for myself. And so when I recognized that, I made a decision because I, I knew I was, I, was, I was messing up. I had these ladies in my life, and I wasn't true to them. Lying to them, trying to get over on them, 
go home, I feel like a dog. I know I was lying. I was, I was, I didn't, I, that's not what I wanted to be, but I was that anyway. And I finally realized, God, I need help in my life. I don't like hurting people, but I was doing it for my own fleshly desires and trying to get over it. You may not be that way, but that's where I was. But it doesn't matter how, where we are, we all need God. And if you say, yes, I want God in my life, the way God comes in your life is through a son. God is so relational. You can't come into his family. He won't come into your life until you receive his son. That's how relational God is. I work through my boy. I work through my son. And I believe some of you want to receive Christ. In a moment, we'll give you an opportunity to raise your hand and receive. I want to pray for you. Or you may say, Pastor, I want to... I recognize I need to recommit my life to Christ. I need to get refocused back on God. And if that's you, then you have a wonderful opportunity to do it today. It's okay. You're already a Christian, but you recognize I, I, I just need to step up my game. Maybe there are some things in your life you just need to lay aside. But whatever it is, we don't need to know what it's not our interest. We don't need to know those details. Between you and God, my role is to get you, is help you connect the, back to God and be refocused on God, make him first so he can add to you. I can tell you from first-hand experience in this ministry in my life, I'm telling you, it's, better, it's a better life to live when God adds to you. You get pleasant surprises when he adds to you, and he's always on time. Thirdly, you may say, Pastor, I'm a Christian, but I somehow struggle. What you may be missing is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, according to the Bible pattern, something happens. You start bubbling up. He bubbles up inside of you, being filled with the Holy Spirit. And it bubbles up in such a way, you can't say it in natural human language. Really, it becomes your heavenly language called other tongues. There's a language that God has given every believer, but we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit to operate in it to talk to God, but the devils and the demons themselves can't understand. You don't understand either because you may talk yourself out of it if you knew it. God starts showing you stuff where he's taking you. It's wonderful, but you say, no, it's too good to be true. I don't have a degree. God can't do that. No, you say, that's why he don't, he's not telling you in your natural language. But when you allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you and talk to God in your heavenly language, you pray about things you need to pray about but don't know to pray about. He's a helper. And some of the need we have in our lives is we lack because we haven't learned about the Holy Spirit and embrace his ministry in our lives. He's, he's there. So if you are the, one of those people that say, yes, I, I want the Holy Spirit in my life, in a moment I'll give you an opportunity to raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you too. And then you may say, Pastor, I like what's going on. I like the teaching here. I like the environment. I like, I like the vibe. I like the music. I like the people. I appreciate that. But right now, it's about you. And how it's important it is to connect to a community of believers. I grew up in the church not really liking the church. And as I got, became a young adult, I was kind of talking about the church and negative. And I understand because I caught the spirit of the world. I saw all the negative and never saw the positive. But really, God is about his family. And the local assembly of the believers is the church. And if the devil can get you not connected to a local church where you can grow and develop and be planted, then he's won half the battle. Keep us not growing and confused and looking for something out there. No, it's in the church. So much so, the Bible says in the Galatians, if you therefore have opportunity, let us do good to all men, but especially unto them who are of the household. That's the church of faith. God has his mind. The church is a God idea. It's not a hustling preacher idea. It's a God idea. Sometimes men always get it right, but more people, more, it's more right more often than not. If you say, yes, I can grow here at this church, that we want to invite you and welcome you as a new member of our church. Because you got to be in an environment. When you leave here, you'll be in another environment. 
And our environment may not be conducive for helping you grow spiritually. A church is designed for that. And so if you say, yes, that's me, then in a moment I'll give you an opportunity to lift up your hand and I'm going to pray for you as well. So if you say, yes, I would like to receive Christ or recommit my life to Christ or be filled with the Holy Spirit or join this church or be connected to one of our small groups we call life groups, we can help you there too, get you connected to other people. They're wonderful groups and they're powerful. That's where a lot of the life of the church goes on is in these life groups. You make friends, but also you go deeper in the word, better understanding. So if you say, yes, Bishop Ed, I would like to respond to one or more of these invitations I just offered you. I want to ask you to raise your hand. Well, every head is bowed and every eye closed. Say, yes, pray for me, Bishop Ed. Would you raise your hand? Raise it up high. If you want to respond to this invitation or one of the things I mentioned, stick hands over here. Make sure that hand. Anyone else? They put those hands down. Anyone else? Raise your hand. My, that a hand over here? My sister? Okay. Any other hand? Raise it up high. Don't be shy. Don't be ashamed. Well, every head is bowed and every eye closed. Believers are praying softly to encourage them and that they would be open to receive. This is your time, my friend. And I want to encourage, especially the men, be bold. Don't wait on nobody else. Be bold. Come get what belongs to you. But God, Jesus has paid an awesome price for you. So if you raise your hand, I want to ask you, if you didn't raise your hand, I want to ask you to come forward. I want to pray for you. Gather your belongings, whatever you brought with you, and come forward. Let's give them a hand. If you raise your hand, please come. If you did not raise your hand, you may still come as well. Come on. Raise your hand, please. Come on, my brother. Come on. My sister, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, sister. Yeah, come. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe you have a friend you'd like to say, whisper, and I'll walk up the with you. That will encourage you. But come receive and get what belongs to you. The price has been paid. Just come. Come get what belongs to you. It may sound too good to be true. That's the nature of God. It's, he always goes further beyond what you can ask a thing. Come receive. It belongs to you. Jesus paid the price, but you have to receive it. To as many as received him, they have the privilege and the right to become one of the sons of God. Come on. Come on. I believe there are others. Don't want you to miss out what God has in store for you. Decision. This decision is huge. It's huge. I can just tell you that you deciding to come forward and receive what you need from God today is such a, um, a liberating thing you need to do. But not just that, but it opens the door and, and what's been hindering you will be broken. Doesn't mean you're a bad person. Doesn't mean nothing like that. You may have been doing good. But see, things happen. And what God is really saying, I want to do more, but you got to draw more. He says, draw close to him. He'll draw close to you. And God is saying, I want more. And you go, I'm going to add to you. When I draw closer to you, you have more of me. What do you have to lose, my brother, my sister? But more pain, more disappointment. What do you got to lose? Heartache. Fear that dominates your life. Come. You know you need to respond. Come on. Yeah, the 
just has your name on it. Come on. Come get what belongs to you. I do this, if I do this, what's going to happen? What about that one? I understand. I get that. But God wants you to believe and walk by faith. We're not, we don't want any money from you. We're not required a commitment from you just to give you an opportunity to receive what you need from the Lord. We'll pray with you, minister to you. It's, it's a matter of your heart. And that's what God wants. And he'll take care of the rest. What about this? He'll take care of that if you put him first and get back aligned with him. What about this? He'll take care of that too. Just come. Just come. Just come. Come now. In the name of Jesus, come now. You're free to come. Stretch your hands toward these, these, my brothers, my sisters that are responding. Father, I pray for my brother and my sisters here. They receive everything they need from you. I pray that the eyes of their understanding will be further enlightened, that they will receive the hope of their calling, fulfilling their purpose in this generation, leaving a God out of me, a legacy for generations to come. I declare that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. You fulfill their, your purpose in their lives. And have a long life where you satisfy them and show them your salvation. The life you have in store begin to unfold. We work with them and you bring other, as others as well to support them. And the folk that may be in their life that should not be there right now, protect them from them. If necessary, remove anybody who really doesn't have your best interest in their life at heart. They don't have to be concerned about it. Handle your business, God. Protect them, their heart, their mind, their purpose and destiny. And bring forth what you have in store. In Jesus' name.